Hey, welcome back to another video for our security systems in our Jokes app. In this section, we're going to work on something called cross-site scripting. And let me demonstrate what it looks like, and then we'll do some explanation, and then finally we'll fix the problem. So I'm going to log in and put in a new joke. So I'll log in as one of my users already that is created called Kim5. Okay, so Kim5 has been authenticated. Looks like I can back up and let's go to the uh, jokes part now. So I'm going to uh, add a new joke and this time I'm going to insert some JavaScript code. So as you can see as I'm typing here, I am inserting some JavaScript code. So the uh, script tag begins the executable part of the code and then the end script tag of course closes it. So your browser will interpret this as a executable piece of code. The uh, code that I put in here is very simple. It's just an alert. But we could create a very malicious piece of code here that can steal passwords and things that are more uh, dangerous than just pressing an alert. But let's see if this works. I'm going to uh, save this. So when I'm done, I get a review of all my jokes. And uh, you notice here I have the developer tools open. So I have a more tools and developer tools turned on. So go turn that on with me if you're following along. And you notice here in the uh, code here, we have uh, something called an XSS auditor. It says it refused to execute a script. So there's some built-in security with Chrome, fortunately so that this uh, code will not execute. However, I went uh, and did some searching to find out how to turn off that protection. So here's a page for you uh, people that are working with Mac. It says how to disable your XS XSS auditor. So I'm going to copy this entire line of code here and I'm going to execute it. I'll put it into my uh, terminal and paste here and press enter. So a new version of Chrome appears, and this should have the, uh, the protections turned off. For you Windows people, there's a page that you can find just as easily, how to d disable this uh, protection. And uh, if you look down a ways here, there's some examples in the Stack Overflow. So you would go to your command prompt, and you would run this command here, which says run Chrome, and then add some arguments, which is disable web security. So obviously cross-site scripting has been a big problem so that Google and other um, companies that make web browsers have built in this uh, cross-site scripter protector. However, we're trying to get around it so we can demonstrate things. So you can run this. So I'm going to switch back into the browser that has the protections removed. So I'm going to go back into my app. So I'm going to search for the word cruel. And now you can see that uh, we have a JavaScript execution going on. We have an alert, and it pops up with the number one, and then it displays the cruel joke. So what this does is, it when a user puts in a, uh, a script in a joke, or maybe some other kind of an input, you can plant these uh, JavaScript executables into your comments or into your postings. And then when other people come by and open those postings, their browser runs the code. So it doesn't take too much imagination that if you can execute code uh, and people don't expect it, you can do horrible things with it. So here's an example of a, a first Google search that I did is how to, how to steal passwords using cross-site scripting. And so here's a recipe how to do it. So there's some explanation of what you can do. Uh, you can create a web page if you want to test it out. And here's the key term. If you're using cookies for any reason in your program to save the user's authentication state, then it is possible to steal that cookie using JavaScript. So if you've got uh, the time and you want to explore it, this is a great site to find out how to use it. So here's what would happen. Instead of doing an alert, you would um, point the browser of the person, that's document.locations, so that redirects their browser, to a different website. So in this case, uh, they're using localhost, which is the number 127001, that's the same server, and they have a, a PHP app called Cookie Stealer. And then it will uh, automatically log your uh, password that's there. So you can follow through the rest of this, and it will hopefully, when you're done, uh, create a text file that saves your 
login credentials. So there's a recipe for how to be a bad guy using cross-site scripting. But for our example, the uh, only cross-site scripting we're going to get is this alert, alert box that says, hey, you've been, uh, you've been scripted, you might say. So uh, what do we do to prevent this is the question. So there's a couple of ways we can prevent this. One is you can prevent people from using any tags when they post or delete the uh, script tags. That, that would work. However, if for some reason a user is able to bypass your filter while putting uh, data into a database and then the uh, browser executes that script later, then, then it's bad. So you might want to have uh, both the check going into your database and also a check before you display any data. So we're going to use the latter half, which is displaying the data, because if the fox is already in the hen house, then the, the game is over. So this page here that we're working on right now, where the, the script attack occurred, was called search keyword. So we're displaying jokes here and executing the JavaScript page. So let's go fix that page. So here is the page called search keyword. And down below at the uh, near the bottom of the page is this while loop where we uh, execute each uh, joke and then display it on the screen. So just a side note here. So if you're working with a PHP or C Sharp or Java to build an interactive web app, so the professional way to do it is to go straight to these tools called uh, frameworks. And so a framework will prevent a lot of uh, security issues just because they've designed them into the, the code. So in PHP, uh, a prop popular framework is called Laravel and it filters out any kind of scripting automatically, so you wouldn't have to code this. However, we're not using Laravel in our example for obvious reasons. We want to build in vulnerabilities and then fix them manually. So the, uh, the code that we need to include in our, in our PHP is called HTML special characters, special chars, we'll call it. Let's go down and find an example of what we're supposed to do. So you can see in this example, so it will encode these characters, such as a bracket and a quotation mark, into printable characters that will go on the browser. So this one, ampersand LT, is the same as this character here. And so it'll print them on the screen rather than execute them. So let's come back into our uh, jokes uh, searching page here. So we're going to create two variables that will be safe to display on the browser. So I'll name them safe joke question and safe joke answer. And these will come through the uh, method here called HTML special chars and we'll use the original joke question and the original joke uh, answer as the input parameters. And so when we display the uh, actual data on the screen we will print out the data called safe joke question and instead of joke answer we'll put out safe joke answer. All right, so now we'll return to the page where we originally saw the results of the scripting attack. And so you can see that the, uh, the actual characters printed here. So it said script alert one script. So it didn't interpret that as JavaScript anymore. And it interpreted it as a regular um, character. So let's take a look and see what's behind this. I'm going to do the uh, view page source command. We have the H3, this is a cruel joke, and then you can see those, those symbols. So ampersand LT uh, semicolon, and then the word script, and then we have a GT, which, which must be the right bracket, and then we do alert and the rest of it. So in this case, we are sanitizing the output before it gets to the browser. So even if uh, somebody is able to smuggle a gun into the concert, uh, we're not allowing them to shoot the gun. It's just coming off as a puff of smoke, you might say. So let's take a look at the website called OWASP. So OWASP is a uh, security nonprofit group that is measuring uh, issues and problems throughout the internet. And they have their top 10 list. So in uh, 2017, which is the most current list as of the date I'm making this video, they have a top 10. So they said injection is the worst problem that is on most websites. Uh, we've got other things, broken authentication, uh, we've got XML issues, there's other things that we haven't even talked about. So this should give you an awareness that there are other things out there that uh, we haven't talked about even though uh, we tried to make our website more secure. So there is, like for instance this one, the cross-site uh, forgery, CSRF, 
uh, kind of similar to a uh, cross-site scripting attack. If you use a framework like Laravel again, uh, that problem is automatically taken care of. So, so maybe frameworks are the most secure way for you to develop an application. So we've, uh, we've fixed up this uh, search keyword. We got this one safe. However, remember there was another uh, place where we showed all of our jokes, and that was here in uh, search all jokes. And so after a user submitted a uh, joke, it automatically displayed all of the jokes. And this one here is vulnerable. Another place where we should use this is in the add joke. So in the add joke, we are using add slashes to get our new joke question. We should probably also run it through the uh, filter to make this uh, HTML safe. And that would prevent the uh, scripting from ever getting into our database in the first place. So there's some cross-site scripting um, information that'll make your website safer.